Ah, there you are, all fresh-faced and headphones on for a little quickie. Good to see you. Good to have you. Hello, one, hello all. I'm Tom Harris, and across from me is Elizabeth Best. That's moi. You join us for a quickie of Ghosts of Boyfriends Past, and today's episode... Uh, is a questions-themed one. Yeah, it's where we get on our little agony aunt and uncle hats and, you know, tell you what we think about your shit. Yes, sometimes uh, Liz and I do our best to give good information, good, good give good responses. Sometimes we don't meet the brief. Sometimes we'll get a question in and go, fuck, I don't really feel comfortable answering that. So if you have better information than us, if you can yes and us in helping the readers of the world... Send your uh, your advice in to ghostsofboyfriendspast at gmail.com. And We'd I've got just that to open oh, with. Superb. Now, this was in our Ghosts of Boyfriends Past group therapy group. Mm. This is posted by someone called Erin. Just listening to the mini ep from this week, for the person who was nervous about going back into dating, I've got some good advice which really helps alleviate the nerves. Oh, terrific. I've spent a lot of time on the dating app, so I have quite a bit of experience with going on first dates. The best thing that I can say is just not to let yourself stress about what they might think of you. The Mm. whole, what will they think of me? Will they like me? Will they think I'm fat slash ugly? You know, any of that. Just remember that what is important is what you think about them. Mm. You need to like them, find them interesting and be attracted to them. You can't control what others think about you, so there's no point stressing about it. Just be yourself and spend the precious energy you have assessing whether they meet your expectations. Yes, it's a, and it it feels backwards the way we the way we go about uh, life and wanting to. And I hope they like me. We do it all. We do it all backwards. Don't worry about that, baby bear. Mm -hmm. Let them let them fall and let them fall for you. You be you. And if they don't like you, then you've done yourself a favour and have weeded them out of your potential suitor pool. And you, you've got to make sure that you like them. It's not about just being like, okay, they like me, now I figure it out. No. Yes. It's an interview for you as well. Absolutely. Mm, good question and good, good information. That's exactly what I'm talking about on yes. this show. When we say, if you've got big, bigger, better uh, information, send it through to us because we need to. We can't just rely on our, our little noggins here. Uh, <laughs> here's a fun one, Elizabeth. Have you ever had the, the, the you dream that your partner cheats on you in yes. your sleep? Yes. And then, or they, or... Have you been on the flip side of that where someone says, I dreamt that you cheated on me and how dare you? And then suddenly you're defending yourself for actions that you didn't, that you, that you did in their brain. Yeah. <laughs> look, I remember I, I've had that dream myself and I, and I've never like acted on it, but I did wake up hostile. Yeah. Like I woke up mad. Yeah. And I do remember telling, I'm telling tales out of school here. Sorry, mum. <laughs> um, I do remember a story where, I think it was mum had a dream when my parents were still together that dad, I think, cheated on her or something and was, like, furious. And I'm like, yeah, as you would be. As you would be. But it's so hard to do if you are are the guilty party in this thing. It's so hard to defend yourself because you haven't (laughs) haven't done anything wrong. You've done nothing wrong. (laughs) But I didn't do it. (laughs) Unless... It's Unless someone's some subconscious ticking away while they're asleep. Doing, uh, ma- uh, matching up uh, Matching up that evidence that, that, and uh, processing stuff that you can't do in your conscious mind. But, uh, but that seems to be a, a prevalent uh, situation in popular culture in it, this, um, this thing. So I want to know, I want to know, has it, so yes, reader, you might have had that dream or been on the end of that uh, accusatory dream, but has it ever escalated in a weird or an un- uncomfortable way where you, an argu- like severe uh, an, an argument comes from it? I'm going to put you in charge of posting yeah, that in the so group this uh, afternoon so that we can get some answers for next time, Tom. Definitely need to know that. All right. There's a question. And th- again, this is from our Ghosts of Boyfriends Past Group Therapy Group. So if you want to jump in there, you can ask your own questions and get lots of different advice. But I thought I'd bring this one to the air because I think that there was some good, useful advice provided by both me and other people. Perfect. So it's from someone called Jessica. I have a question. Do you ever think that you can fall back in love with an ex that you spent six months getting over after they broke your heart? 
18 months ago and now want you back because, in quotes, they made a huge mistake. Mm. We were deliriously happy while together for a year or so and we were in the process of buying a property. Kids got on really well. It was peachy and then very abruptly it wasn't. It was his call. Can you get that back? Gee whiz. Uh, the cynical part of me says maybe maybe not or, it's, or trends unlikely that there's something – Something br- brought you apart or pulled you to apart, right? There mm. was reasons that mm. it's not like you break up for no reason, that for no speed bump, right? They're very yeah. Uh, so do you have do you have to bring you have to stitch that back together, right? You have to maybe yes. build those. So trending unlikely, but not impossible is would be my my answer. So but each each. Couple has different has different. Oh my god! How do you how do you answer it? Well, see the way that I went, and and I very strange that you tended towards cynical, yeah, and I'm I tended towards my, optimistic. I've, I've surprised myself. Um, what I said was, I think that you can fix it. Um, because here's the thing. So I've had a lot of people, um, and friends of mine decide to break up with someone because they thought X, Y, or Z, and then after a year in the dating pool, they realised how great what they had was and that they were being silly and nitpicky. Are they uh, devil's advocate here? Are they not just uh, disappointed at the arena of the dating world and have gone, ah, I preferred being in a relationship, that one will do, that one was okay? Potentially, but in a situation that I've seen a, a particular friend in, um, she broke up with her partner um, mm. of I think about four or five years and then was like, you know, I'm not happy. But all of the things that she was unhappy with, she realised she had been very nitpicky with and a bit overbearing. So my, my advice was... Um, I said, look, there's one particular relationship that I'd kill for a do-over in because I did break up with them for the stupidest of reasons. I was just young and dumb. Mm. Um, and I said, because there, there can be cases of right person, wrong time, right? So sure. you might break up because timing is awful. But I said, you have to take it slow because now you have to work at regaining the trust that was broken when the relationship broke up. So you you can't just jump back in. You don't get to be automatic happy married couple. You don't get to be automatically jumping to looking at the property listings this week. Yes. You have to start brand new and any kind of trust or vulnerability has to be earned from scratch again. I like yeah, I like that approach to to speed. Uh because as Time changes you, and it change, but it changes everyone. The longer that goes on, uh, that you two have been apart, the more time that goes on, the diff- the more different you become. So, mm-hmm. so getting, so trying to pull to back into a relationship with someone, if two years have gone by, suddenly the, the stakes might be might be different. So exactly, I, I I will definitely definitely concede that two people can get back together. Yeah. That's total totally. I just I just feel like it's going to be hard work. I think is what's putting put, uh, putting the. Uh, uh, putting an issue with me. I think you've got to assess how broken it was and make sure that the reasons that you broke up or that that person broke up with you are either still valid or were silly on the part of the breakup. Per mm. really, and uh, I can't remember. Did the did the reader state that? The t- that both of them wanted to get back to, or were interested in getting back together, or was it purely one-sided? I have one-sided? a feeling, I have a sneaky feeling that the reason the reader is writing this in is because they're like, I want to, but I don't think I should. Because if you didn't want to get back with someone, you wouldn't ask the question, right? Mm, so yes. obviously he's like, you know, I've made a huge mistake. Um, but, yeah, we've had fairly similar advice except from friend of the podcast, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> he said, just get him to take you out, buy you lots of booze and food and then see what you think. Worst case scenario, you get free food and booze. <laughs> it's ever ever pragmatic. And Steve. I said <laughs> and I said, That's not good advice. Don't listen to Steve. Don't do things when you're impaired by alcohol. <laughs> He's a wonderful man to have as a guest on a sh- on your on your podcast. He will never be our He's, agony yeah, uncle. <laughs> but yes. Good yeah. sense of humor though, Steve. Uh funny good stuff. Great question. Really, really interesting question. Um I hope we can I hope we help somewhat. If you want to add to the conversation, jump in our group therapy group because you can post the comments are still open on that one. Yes. Uh, please join us there. Um the ex 
guests of the show will pop up there so you can have little celebrity moments where you go, ah. Oh, <laughs> Steve is not a celebrity. I will put that. <laughs> in, the re- in the realm of Ghost of Boyfriend's past, he certainly is. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll leave, leave us on a question, open-ended. Can you tell a married person a secret? Yeah, why? Oh, what you think they're going to tell their yeah, partner? Yeah, they're going to tell because there's there's marriage to like uh, <gasps> contracts that says uh, any secret says enter this realm. You co- it's coming to me. I think if if it's a serious enough secret that they'd withhold it from their partner, yeah. like if it's a big, I feel like it's stakes, right? So mull, if it, I, mull it over over the next yeah. few weeks, and we'll we'll revisit. We'll revisit it next week. There you go, readers. Can you can you tell a married person a secret? <laughs>